It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Today covers the biggest stories from around the sports world in under 30 minutes. It will go down as one of the great playoff games of all time. Start your morning going beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with our local expert. Jimmy Garoppolo, you got to figure it out. There's no world where it's not better when you have Kyrie for any amount of games. No one's going to feel sorry for the Lakers. That is part of what makes this such a compelling story. Follow Locked On Today wherever you get podcasts. It's free and available on all platforms. Imagine that. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Red Sox podcast. I am your host, Massachusetts team insider, Jake Ingzuski, or Iggy for short. And I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen every single day. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I hope everybody is having an amazing Tuesday, and I really appreciate the warm welcome after my first episode on Locked On Red Sox podcast yesterday. It was amazing getting so much support throughout social media and through Twitter, but I wanted to start today's show talking a little bit of news that came from John Heyman this afternoon. John Heyman reported that the Red Sox are one of four teams that checked in on shortstop Trevor Story. Story is one of the shortstops that were highly touted throughout this free agency, but after a little bit of a disappointing season with the Rockies, and it was surprising that honestly the Rockies did not trade him at the trade deadline, he hasn't really gotten too much traction throughout this free agency and potentially could be a good option for the Red Sox to either slot into that shortstop position or move to second base. Or even he could, like I said, move into that shortstop position and have uh, Xander Bogarts slot into that second base position. And then also as well, it was reported that Red Sox bench coach Will Venable will interview for the Athletics managerial job. Venable was also a guy who interviewed for the Red Sox managerial position this past year and has been a managerial position really over the past two to three years. And so he will be looking to replace Bob Melvin over there in Oakland. But today, I sort of thought it was a great opportunity for you and myself to get to know each other a little bit. Since Lauren has been doing this podcast solo over the past month and a half, I said, I'll just take this episode for myself, do it solo, give myself the opportunity to get the audience, uh, to get to know the audience a little bit more, and also to have the audience get a little bit, get to know a little bit more about myself as well. So this morning on Twitter, I posted, who is your favorite Red Sox player from 2021 other than Xander Bogards, Rafael Devers, Kike Hernandez, or JD Martinez? Honestly, I put those players in the back end and kind of put them off the board because honestly, I kind of knew that they were just going to fill up in the replies or fill up with the votes. Um, And I kind of wanted to see what you guys thought about some other players on the roster. So we got 42 entries when I checked at 7.30 p.m. on Monday night. And Nathan Avaldi overarchingly won with 10 votes. And then coming in second, tied uh, was Kyle Schwarber for five votes, Alex Verdugo for five votes. Uh, There was a three-way tie in third with Bobby Delbeck with four votes, Garrett Whitlock with four, and Tanner Houck with four. Uh, And then Renfro came in fourth with three votes. Uh, And then there was a three-way tie in fifth place of Jaron Duran with two, Christian Vasquez, and Christian Arroyo. And then there was just some honorable mention of Frenchie Cordero, which was put in by the show's good friend, Pesky Report. And I kind of felt like that was a little bit of a joke with how disappointing of a season he had. And then Nick Pavetta with also one vote as well. But honestly, my vote would have been Alex Verdugo. He's a guy ever since he came over from the Mookie Betts trade has just brought the energy. He's brought so much passion, is really embraced Boston and Red Sox Nation as well. He, I, I'll never forget... Um, your brother from Boston. He did that uh, in the 
in the ALDS, did a little bit of an impression of that Samuel Adams advertisement. And he's a guy who has really, who really came up not only in 2020, where he was pretty much the best player on that roster since that team was so disappointing, but throughout 2021, he came up clutch in so many critical situations. And like I mentioned, him and Kike Hernandez were the two guys that brought the energy. It seemed like every single night. But honestly, it makes sense that Nathan Valdi was one of the guys who really a lot of people enjoyed throughout the 2021 season. Uh, he was the guy who kind of slotted into that ace position while Chris Sale recovered from Tommy John surgery. And he was honestly a little bit snubbed from the Cy Young voting. He came in fourth. I honestly thought he should have come in second or even just won it but you got to give props to Robbie Ray for his incredible season this past year but I think that's what somebody said on Twitter that he was snubbed from the Cy Young voting and I completely agree it seemed like every single time Avaldi went out there he had a really stellar performance there was only once or twice where you saw Avaldi allow like five to six runs I'll never forget that Yankees start where he just blew up in two innings and it was honestly very surprising. You know, I, I I watched that game and it was a tough game to watch. But And you never really expected that from Nathan Avaldi. And especially going into that wild card against the Yankees, all fans honestly thought that Nathan Avaldi should start that game, and which he did. And it, it was honestly really interesting to see all your guys' votes and see who you guys really enjoyed. Schwarber wasn't too, too much of a surprise since... He was such a great player coming over from the Washington Nationals in over from the trade deadline. And then when you look at, you know, the three-way tie with Bobby Dalbeck, Garrett Whitlock, and Tanner Houck, I, I find it kind of interesting that all those guys are tied for third and all those guys were rookies last year. Obviously, we saw Bobby Dalbeck had a little bit of a rough start to the season, but then when you saw all the rumors swirling around, maybe uh, Anthony Rizzo would come over uh, during the trade deadline. You could kind of see that that motivated Bobby Dalbeck to sort of step his game up a little bit. But you always kind of expect a rookie to struggle during his first few games in the majors. And Dalbeck was also coming up as a uh, known as a high strikeout rate. He was kind of like an Adam Dunn type of player where, you know, low average, with, but he hits the ball super far. But he kind of had a lot of high expectations for Dalbeck going into 2021 with him leading all of his spring training with seven home runs. But obviously we saw him become one of the best hitters in all of baseball during the second half. And that was a big part from his help with uh, from Kyle Schwarber, who said that he helped him in the batting cages when he came over from the trade. Garrett Whitlock, obviously a guy, not too much of a surprise. I honestly thought he should have gotten a lot more votes in the rookie of the year. He's a guy that the Red Sox got in the Rule 5 draft from the New York Yankees. And he was a guy who, you know, it was so easy to rag on Yankees fans. You guys, because they essentially just handed the Red Sox Garrett Whitlock. And as we saw as well, the guy that they decided to protect over Garrett Whitlock in the Rule 5 draft ultimately got released by the Yankees and picked up by the league's worst team, the Baltimore Orioles, which is pretty laughable. But Garrett Whitlock, a guy super re reliable out of the bullpen time and time again, and could honestly see him getting a good amount of starts this next season in the rotation, especially with all the question marks uh, regarding the Red Sox rotation going into 2022. But throughout the season, he just found a way to just strike hitters out, look like a veteran. And it was interesting, especially I think it was his first like 15 games that he pitched. He hadn't allowed a run. And you're like looking at just, is this guy a rookie? Are you kidding me right now? And then when you look at a guy like Tanner Houck going into the season, he had a lot of high expectations after how well he did in 2020, you know, in the back end of that 2020 season, Houck made four starts and I'll never forget his, his uh, debut. I think he got like seven strikeouts, only allowing two hits. And you're thinking in your mind, this kid's the rookie. Like this looks like the second coming of Chris sale especially with his insanely filthy stuff, you know, that sweeping slider uh, 
he looks like a right-handed Chris Sale, which which most people would say with that sweeping slider. And then also looking as well uh, with Duran and Vasquez and Arroyo in that fifth spot. Makes sense with uh, Renfro as well in that fourth spot. But it was really interesting to hear your guys' thoughts on who were some of your favorite players throughout this 2021 Red Sox season. Obviously, it was a super exciting season. Not a lot of people expected them to go as far as they did, but so much excitement, so much passion. Reminded me a lot of the 2013 Red Sox, quite honestly. And it's just a perfect representation of something that you're going to hear from me time and time again of the phrase, in Heim we trust. Nobody expected this team to be good. Nobody expected this team to go to the even close to the ALDS, but Heimblum had a plan, and that's all as fans we really got to do is in Heim we trust. In the second segment of Locked On Red Sox podcast, I will be talking about some of my all-time favorite moments in Red Sox history from my time since I've started following the Red Sox And I also look at the poll that was done on Locked On Red Sox Twitter and talk a little bit about what your guys' all-time favorite moments were from since you've been a Red Sox fan. But I want to take a second to talk about Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long. More props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues the march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all sports action this season. Head over to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LOCKED ON to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. But today I want to tell you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. Direct TV stream brings you live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. And you can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Hey there, John Corrales here. I am the host of the Locked On Celtics podcast. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the Boston Celtics are awesome now. You probably want to hear a whole lot about this team. Jason Tatum, is he an MVP candidate? Jalen Brown, is he an all-NBA guy? Ime Odoka, is he a coach of the year guy? Going to talk about all that stuff. How did the Celtics turn this around? How do they look moving forward? Their seeding, their potential. Can they win an NBA championship? It's all every day, Monday through Friday, on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you got this podcast, and you can watch the show on YouTube. Hi, this is Jeff Carr from Locked On Reds. You know, with Locked On Podcast, you're used to hearing us talk about your favorite local team. But how would you like to hear us talk about your business, helping you reach passionate local sports fans just like you? Unlike any other podcast, Locked On gives your company the unique ability to reach local podcast listeners, but not just any podcast listener, a Locked On podcast listener. If your company wants to connect with local sports fans, and a predominantly male audience that's well-educated with disposable income, then let's put your company right here on this Locked On podcast. Local fans love to support local businesses. Text the word advertising to 33777 or visit LockedOnPodcast.com slash advertising and let us know who you are. Our team is here to help your team achieve Locked On advertising success. Once again, Text the word advertising to 33777 or visit lockedonpodcast.com slash advertising. We look forward to hearing from you. And so now we are going to be going into this second segment talking about your favorite moments since you have been a fan of the Red Sox. So this was another one of the questions that I asked you guys 
on Twitter this morning. I really wanted to sort of get a sense of not only what your guys' favorite players were from this past season, as well as since you've been a fan, what's some of your favorite moments? Because I, I, I feel like it's really interesting to sort of look back at your fandom of your favorite team and really think about what are my favorite moments? And so, you know, a lot of the people did say the 2004 World Series. Uh, I saw somebody mention Johnny Damon's Grand Slam in the 2004 ALCS, which was a huge moment. And even though, just disclaimer, even though on my first episode I said, you know, I was five years old during the 2004 World Series, does not mean that I haven't taken the time to, you know, watch documentaries, research the 2004 World Series. One of the other moments was uh, David Roberts, 2004 stolen base, which was so close clutch in that ALCS against the Yankees. It was a huge turning moment for the Red Sox uh, as, as they were down 3-0 in the series. And then just one that any Red Sox fan will remember if you bring it up is the David Ortiz Grand Slam in Game 2 of the ALCS back in 2013. I'll never forget uh, Anibal Sanchez had a one-hitter and mainly had a no-hitter going into the, I think it was the seventh or eighth inning during game one of that ALCS against the Detroit Tigers. And then during that game two, I'll never forget just being on the edge of my seat, hoping and praying that the Red Sox would do something to find a way to get back in the game. And Joaquin Benoit was on the mound. David Ortiz, bases loaded, uh, hits the grand slam. And then looking at game six of the ALCS back in 2013, that's another one that I will never forget is – just looking back and thinking about Shane Victorino, his grand slam and Joe Buck's call t talking about how it just went up in the monster. And I I'll never forget me just jumping up and down in excitement uh, from that home run and really doing my best to really encapsulate this entire moment. Because as you can see, if you're watching the video version, I'm wearing the get beard shirt uh, back from 2013. That was my favorite team. Um, I don't know about you guys, but that team just had so much swagger, just had so much passion, so much personality, so much energy. And I'll never forget just them grabbing their beards as the celebration and really Johnny Gomes, you know, Mike Napoli. And then when Koji would just come out and just find a way to, you know, close the door so easily. Um, that that was some of my favorite moments uh, as a Red Sox fan. And I'll never forget it. Uh, one, one of the other interesting moments, you know, looking back um, from my time following the Red Sox uh, was back in 2018. I'll, I'll never forget when Mitch Moreland uh, hit that three run home run to put the Red Sox up. I can't exactly remember what game that was, but I just never I'll just never forget um, how great of a moment that was and especially how critical it was during that 2018 World Series. And I don't know about you guys, but. Ever since I've been a Red Sox fan, 2018, I've never seen a team so good, just so dominant. I, I, I remember just saying to my friends, is this team really that good? Like, is this team ever going to lose? Because I, I remember just looking at the All-Star break, thinking in my mind, this team could honestly break the record of the amount of wins that the Seattle Mariners set with 116. Obviously, they got 108 to end the season and ultimately had 119 when they won the World Series. But that was just such a great year, such a great team. And especially that run, you know, going through passing the Yankees and, and especially when they put up, I think, like 12 against Luis Severino and really beating down on the Yankees. And one thing that I'll never forget about that 2018 team was Craig Kimbrell. It seemed like every single time Kimbrell went in, it was really tough to actually be confident that the Red Sox were going to win because uh, he always found a way to make it much more of a tougher situation to close the door than it actually should have been. And he always found a way to load the bases or just get a lot of the other team to creep back a little bit. And I, I'll just I'll just never forget how tough it was to feel confident that Craig Kimball was going to shut the door. And then also looking at as well, Andrew Benintendi's diving catch uh, to help the Red Sox uh, win that game against the Astros. Uh, his, his, his him just jumping up like, let's go, 
Like it, it was just so, so much fun to watch throughout that entire season. And honestly, I just wanted to mention as well, you're going to learn from me real quick that I love Heimblum. I'm not a huge Dave Dombrowski fan, even though, you know, I greatly appreciate everything that Dave Dombrowski did for the Red Sox, helping them, you know, win that 2018 World Series, bring Nathan Avaldi over here, as well as Steve Pierce during those uh, really critical um, 2018 trade deadline moves, especially with what Steve Pierce did throughout the 2018 World Series, ultimately becoming the World Series MVP. You'll never, you'll, you'll never be able to discount how big that uh, trade was. But Dombrowski was just a guy who I think put a lot of payroll constraints on the Red Sox as well as shipped away all their prospects uh, that they had in that stacked farm system when he first came over to the Red Sox. And I just wanted to mention this so you don't think that um, – I'm a, I'm a big Dave Dombrowski fan because I, I honestly, like I said, appreciate everything they did for the team, but I'm way more of a fan of what Bloom is doing to build up this team. I understand a lot of people believe that he's, you know, not doing what traditional Red Sox teams have done. Go out there, spend tons of money and as well as trade away all your prospects to win now, win now. But we saw what happened after Dave Dombrowski did that. The Red Sox had one of the lowest ranked farm systems in the entire MLB. They had so much payroll that they had to find a way to shred off. And honestly, because of Dave Dombrowski, that's why Mookie Betts isn't here. For for people who uh, don't already know, Mookie Betts' trade was a salary dump, essentially. And just so you know, I, I was a big fan of the Mookie Betts trade. I, I wasn't a guy who was super upset about them trading him because I, I knew it was kind of an inevitable. The Red Sox had the opportunity to, you know, get a lot of prospects, be able to bolster up their farm system, as well as get a lot, tons of salary off. You know, Mookie Betts was owed $27 million. David Price owed $31 million over the next, I think it was like two to three years. And the Red Sox had were about to get docked 50% of the tax of the luxury tax. And obviously now looking back, it was a big reason why they were able to purchase the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and now try and purchase an NBA team, which believe me, I'm not a huge fan of that either. I, as, as anybody would, I want the Red Sox to go out and spend. I want the Red Sox to go out there and make this team better. So they're able to win, uh, you know, immediately. But at the end of the day, I'll always go back to what Heim Bloom said in his induct introductory press conference. I want to make this team competitive for years to come. And that's something that I'm looking forward to because I'll never forget just seeing this Red Sox team go from worst to first, worst to first. And it, it was just such a cycle. They, they were never able to fully be consistent. E even really after, you know, they won the World Series in 2013, they sucked in 2014. And same thing in 2018, they sucked in 2019. They've, they've just never really been able to be consistently good ever since, you know, you could go all the way back to like 2007. Um, well, I mean, they were good in 2008, 2009, but then obviously 2010 really fell off. But that's what I'm saying. Being able to be like the Dodgers, being able to be like the Rays and be consistently good from year to year and also have a stacked farm system where you're able to make those trades as well as also plan for the future. So I just want to give that little bit of a disclaimer that you're going to hear me a lot say in Heim we trust, but that's just because I look at Heim Bloom other than for our anxiety, other than Andrew Friedman. I, or you could also say David Stearns, who is the general uh, uh, general manager of the Brewers. I think Heim Bloom is top five, one of the smartest people in baseball. And talking and in, going into segment three, we are going to be ending the episode on a mental health note. You know, giving some encouraging words as well as talking about what you can look forward to in Wednesday's episode of Locked On Red Sox podcast. So going into the third segment, I want to talk about a little bit of what you can preview uh, listening to on Wednesday's episode, where Lauren and I are going to be breaking down sort of the Trevor Story interest, as well as talk about some potential second baseman options going into 2022. Obviously, we could either see Kike Hernandez a lot at second base, 
if when he platoons with Jackie Bradley Jr. And there's also tons of question marks on how the outfield situation is really going to look going in 2022, as well as potentially Christian Arroyo. Or could we see Jeter Downs get caught up? I don't really think so. I think he needs some more time in AAA. But definitely tune in to Wednesday's episode to hear Lauren and I's thoughts on all these storylines. So I want to end this episode sort of on a positive note, talking about really we're at the end of the year right now. And it's tough a lot of times for people going through these holiday times, either being alone, going through some struggling times, and ending the year. And it's always tough to stay in a positive mindset, especially when you're going through those hard times. One quote that has really been huge for me when I go through those tough times is everything happens for a reason. And really being able to take a step back and think about what can I learn from this situation? How is this situation going to help me grow? And I honestly believe that everything does happen for a reason. You know, different situations come up in your life so you can learn for the future. And you won't fully be able to realize that until later down the line when you think in your mind, oh yeah, that's why I went through that. So then I could learn this. And it's, like I said, really tough to be able to understand it in the moment. And so take a step back. Remember what you're grateful for. You know, if you have a car, you have a car. You know, if you have a phone, you have a phone. Not a lot of people have a phone. You woke up today. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? You, you, so many things can happen in this life. You never really know when your time on this journey is going to end. So remember that you get every second once and really take that time to be grateful for everything that you have in your life because there's so many people who have it much, much worse than you do. And like I said yesterday, Make sure to be proud of yourself. Be proud of how far you've come. Where were you January 1st and where are you today? And take that time to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm proud of you. You're doing amazing. Keep killing it. And that's how I want to end this episode on Locked On Red Sox podcast. Thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen every single day. And now make your second listen Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and it's available on all platforms. Also, make sure to subscribe on YouTube to Locked On Red Sox as well as subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your audio podcasts so you always get notified for daily episodes of Locked On Red Sox. And so you also don't miss an update for your favorite team, the Red Sox. I'm Jake Nazuski, and you can follow me on Twitter at Jake Iggy or also on Instagram um, at I am Jake Iggy. Make sure you follow Locked On Red Sox on Twitter. So then, like I said, you get updates on all new episodes as well as we're going to be doing a lot more of these open-ended questions on Twitter. I want to hear your guys' thoughts. I want to be able to interact with the audience and sort of incorporate your guys' thoughts and opinions into each show. I really enjoyed uh, being able to do that throughout today. And I hope that you were able to learn a little bit about myself through this episode. And it was a lot of fun being able to learn a little bit about you guys. And like I mentioned, Thanks so much for all the warm welcome uh, after my first episode yesterday. I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of this podcast, and I'm so excited for you guys to see what Lauren and I have, store, have in store for this lockout. We got a lot of fun interviews. We got a lot of fun ideas. So definitely make sure you tune in to every single day, Monday through Friday, Locked On Red Sox. And even though it's the lockout, we still have lots to talk about. I'll see you guys tomorrow. The New England Patriots are adding a little spice to their defensive backfield in the form of safety Jabril Peppers. I'm Mike DeBate, host of the Locked On Patriots podcast, and according to ESPN's Adam Schefter and Mike Reese, Jabril Peppers and the Patriots have agreed on a one-year deal for him to play his football in Foxborough in 2022. Peppers is a five-year veteran, spending the first two years of his career in Cleveland and the last three with the Giants. Suffered a torn ACL at the end of last year. However, initial reports indicate that he'll be ready to go and he should be good for the start of training camp. And this is a solid signing for the Patriots, folks. 
They needed some depth in the secondary, and Peppers definitely provides that. Not only can he align at the box safety as well as the free safety, but he can also align at both cornerback, wide out. He can definitely do the slot. He's lined up at hybrid linebacker. He's even aligned on the defensive line. And as for his return capabilities, he can definitely do that as well. A solid punt returner, a solid kick returner. Peppers has a tremendous upside, and if the Patriots can get out of him what they expect, this signing has the chance to pay dividends in Foxborough for 2022.